A factor that affects solubility is the temperature of the solvent that you're dissolving the solute into. A solute generally is the solid portion of the mixture that you're putting into the solvent to make a solution. Solute and solvent make a solution. Uh, but if you have two liquids that are mixing together, the one in lesser amount is the solute and the one in greater amount is the solvent. Together again, they'll make a solution. Now, in terms of factors that affect solubility, temperature can actually affect how much or the quantity that you can dissolve of a solute into a solvent. Now, here's a generalization. It doesn't work for all ionic compounds necessarily, but it's a good one. When you're taking something like sodium chloride and you want to take solid and put it into water, just, just above the air, I'm just telling you that I'm dissolving it in water, to form sodium chloride aqueous, you can dissolve more solid into that solvent to make a solution if you add heat. And so, by warming up the mixture, you can actually put more of the solid into the solvent. Chemicals will dissolve in one another if they are alike in terms of either possessing charge in them or not possessing charge. So I'll show you what I mean right here. The nature of the solute and the solvent in terms of their uh, polarity is actually important. Now look, we're not going to talk about real chemical polarity in a proper sense until the bonding unit which comes up later on this disc. You can flip to it right now and look at it or if your teacher hasn't taught you that bonding unit before the solutions unit, you kind of just understand this polarity explanation to this degree right now and then really get into it when I talk about shapes and polarities of molecules later. Then you want to come back to here and really ground yourself very well with this nature of solute and solvent discussion. Okay, now, water is actually not a linear molecule of H2O straight across, but it's bent. And because of that, water, because of its, let's say right now, highly um, um, unsymmetrical type of shape. It's not linear like you would expect, it's kind of bent. And so because of that, water is a polar molecule. It actually has partially negative region around the oxygen and partially positive around the hydrogen. Now, water and salt, NaCl, because NaCl turns into, when you dissolve it into water, Na positive AQ and Cl negative AQ ions, and by the way, again, that's why it conducts so well in solution. Moleculars don't because they don't make charges, but ionic compounds make charges in solutions. Acids and bases too make charges in solutions, so that's why they're electrolytes. Now, NaCl turns into positive and negative charge. Water has partially positive and negative regions in it. And because of that, these two actually form solutions very, very well. Now, methane gas. When you bubble methane into water, can you actually make a solution out of it? Like you could if you bubbled in hydro HCl gas into water, you'll get hydrochloric acid. And that's an electrolyte. But when you take methane gas, which is quite symmetrical in terms of its look, isn't it, really, in two dimensions here. This is a nonpolar molecule because of its degree of symmetry. Now, that CH4, when you dissolve it into water, which is polar, doesn't like to dissolve in water, actually. So you try to dissolve it, it won't do the job, and so what you get is something that will not form a solution. And so right here, this, these two together won't make a solution, this will. So, here's what you've got. Any ionic compound dissolves in water, you've got yourself a solution. And it doesn't matter if it usually is a low solubility ionic compound, it will still dissociate or dissolve a little bit in solution enough to form a conducting solution and one that can actually be called a solution. Pressure doesn't really affect solids and liquids going into solution, but it does affect gases. And here's how. Gases, you can actually pressurize and force them into solution. And when you do that, when you force a gas into a, a solvent with a greater pressure, you're going to get a greater amount of dissolving taking place. And so therefore, 
increasing the pressure increases the solubility of the gas in water. Also, it's good to know that, now first of all, pressure only applies to gases, and then the colder your solvent is, the better it is for dissolving. So bubbles will stay in solution a lot better when it's colder, like a, a cold can of pop, uh, than if it's warmer. So if you have a, a can of pop here, psh, cold can of pop here, psh, put this in the fridge, leave this one on the counter, the one with, uh, that's been in the fridge is going to retain its fizz longer because the bubbles, the gas, will stay in the solution better when it's colder than when it's warmer, when the molecules are bouncing around more and pfft, out comes the gas.